That's why I'm here. I'm not here to, for you to say, well, he's a good singer. I'm here for God to say, he's talking about me and he's singing about me. And I love my Lord. And I'm looking forward to go to heaven. Aren't you? Praise the Lord. But also, I'm looking forward to see my Lord's face. I seek his face. Also, I'm looking to see my crown and my mansion. I don't know about wearing a crown. I'll sit up on my mantle because it'll get in my way, I think. But I'm going to want a crown. And also, I'm also going to fly. I want to fly. I want to fly through this universe because I know that through the universe, his planets exist and his whole creation. And I believe he's going to take us through there to prepare us for heaven. Praise God. Worship with me as I sing. This song kind of sings a little bit about flying. What's it like to be an eagle and to fly? What's it like to be leave the nest and soar the sky? Well, I don't know just how it feels, but someday I know I will. For there's something telling me I was born to fly. When I can feel my spirit getting ready to spread its wings, I'm going to leave this world behind for better things. Oh, very soon I'll say goodbye. I'm going to wing my way to the eastern sky. Oh, so get ready to lift. You were born to fly. Oh, for so long this nest of life has fettered me. Oh, my soul has longed so much to be set free. Well, there's no house of clay can hold me when it comes in the clouds of glory. Well, there's something telling me I was born to fly. Oh, and I can feel my spirit getting ready to spread its wings. I'm going to leave this world behind for better things. Oh, very soon I'll say goodbye. I'm going to leave this world behind. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh. Oh, and I can feel my spirit getting ready to spread its wings. I'm going to leave this world behind for better things. Oh, very soon I'll say goodbye. I'm going to wing my way to the eastern sky. Oh, so get ready to lift. You were born to fly. Oh, so get ready to lift. You were born to fly. For so long this nest of life has fettered me. Oh, my soul has longed so much to be set free. There's no house of clay can hold me when he comes in the clouds of glory. But there's something telling me I was born to fly. Oh, and I can feel my spirit getting ready to spread its wings. Don't leave this world behind for better things. Oh, very soon I'll say goodbye. I'm going to wing my way to the eastern sky. Oh, so get ready to live. You were born to fly. Oh, so get ready to live. You were born to fly. Born to fly. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Praise your name. Thank you, Lord, for everything you've done. I thank you, Lord. Plow the field right now. Get ready for the word of the Lord. What do you say? Oh, glory. God's going to set a table for us today where we can eat abundantly. And I want you to throw away your napkin. I want you to forget about your manners. 
You know, that, uh, my <coughs> wife tells me that she likes for folks to come and eat, and I know you know what she's talking about, that, that love to eat. But you see somebody come and pick around, you know, I don't know if I like that or not. I'll take a little bit of this. You know, I'll take one little slice of carrot or maybe a, a little wing here or something. I'm not, you know. man, you know, it makes you a little nervous, don't I mean? You like to see somebody, thank you, I believe we'll have some of those taters there. You know? uh, that compliments your cooking. And, it, and the person is at ease, and you want people to be at ease, don't you? I mean... I believe the Lord's like that too. When we come to the table of the Lord, eat abundantly. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Forget about which fork to use and all like that. Dig in. Worship God. Prepare your heart for the word. Praise the Lord. Worship with us, quartet. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15, the Apostle Paul says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit corruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound. And the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Amen. When we fly away, we're going to have a new life. This old body is not going to be the same anymore. I like to think about it like this. My soul really likes to worship the Lord. It was designed for worshiping the Lord. That's what it was made for. But this old body sometimes causes us to have limitations. We just uh, don't really uh, sometimes uh, get loose like we would really like to, like our soul really wants to worship the Lord. But someday we're not going to have this body to limit us. It's going to be changed. Hallelujah. Then our soul is going to be able to worship God the way it really wants to. Hallelujah, without any limitations. On that resurrection morning, when all the dead in Christ shall rise, I'll have a new body. Praise the Lord, I'll have a new life. Amen. On that resurrection morning, when all the dead in Christ shall rise, I'll have a new body. Praise the Lord, I'll have a new life. Soul in weakness, raised in power, ready to live in paradise. I'll have a new body. Oh, praise the Lord, I'll have a new life. I'll have a new home. Glory, glory, glory. with redeemed heaven sad. There'll be no more sorrow, no, no more pain, there'll be no more strife. Oh, yes, in the likeness in of my likeness. Savior, ready to live in I'll paradise. Be glad. I'll have Oh, praise the Lord, I'll have a new life. What a hallelujah morning when the last trump of God shall sound. I'll have a new body. Oh, praise the Lord, I'll have a new life. Praise all bursting saints, all shouting heavenly beauty all around. I'll have a new body. Praise the Lord, I'll have a new life. Have a new home of glory, love glory, eternal glory. with the redeemed of Ever God to stand. There'll be no more sorrow, no, no more pain, pain, there'll be no more strife. Yes, raised in the likeness in of my likeness. Savior, ready to live in I'll paradise. I'll have a new body. Oh, praise the Lord, I'll have a new life. What a hallelujah morning when the last trump of God shall sound. I'll Praise the Lord, I'll have a new life. Praise all bursting saints, all shouting heavenly beauty all around. I'll have a new body. Oh, praise the Lord, I'll have a new life. I'll have a new home of love eternal glory. with the redeemed of Ever God to stand. stand. There'll be no more sorrow, no more pain, there'll be no more strife. Yes, raised in the likeness in of my likeness. Savior, ready to live in I'll paradise. I'll have a new body. Praise the Lord, I'll have a new life. I'll have a new home of love eternal glory. with the redeemed of Ever God to stand. There'll be no more sorrow, no more pain, there'll be no more strife. 
as raised in the likeness in of my likeness. Savior, ready to live in I'll paradise. Praise, Praise the, Lord, the Lord, I'll have a new life. On that resurrection morning, when all the dead in Christ arise, I'll have a new body. Praise the Lord, I'll have a new life. Sown in weakness, raised in power, ready to live in paradise. Praise the Lord, I'll have a new life. I'll have a new home of love eternal with the redeemed of God to stand. There'll be no more sorrow, no more pain, there'll be no more strife. Yes, raised in the likeness of my Savior, ready to live in paradise. I'll have a new body, praise the Lord, I'll have a new life. I'll have a new home of love eternal with the redeemed of God to stand. No more pain, there'll be no more strife. It's raised in the likeness in of my likeness. Savior, ready to live in paradise. I'll have a new body, oh, praise the Lord, I'll have a new life. Sing it with us. I'll have a new home, no of glory, eternal, glory. with the redeemed of God to stand. There'll be no more sorrow, no, no more pain, pain, there'll be no more strife. It's raised in the likeness in of my likeness. Savior, ready to live in I'll paradise. I'll have a new Praise the Lord, I'll have a new life. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Everybody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, it's good to be a child of God today. Yes, hallelujah. Good to be in God's house. This is God's house. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Good spirit of worship. And the worship is the key to the moving of the Holy Ghost. And without the moving of the Holy Ghost, it's all in vain. We've got to have the move of the Holy Ghost. And it's got to come through worship. Amen. Worship is an expression to God as to how you feel about Him. People that don't worship is not excited about God. But if you're excited about Him, worship is an expression of that feeling. Somebody say, I don't know how to worship God. Well, just, just tell God how you feel about Him. Through praise and, and uh, excitation and lifting Him up. Praise the Lord. I'm glad that I feel like worshiping God today in my heart. Aren't you? Amen. Well, it's just nice to be here, and I praise the Lord because I belong to the great big family of God. Uh, those songs that we're singing, it just fits me perfect this morning because I plan to make it, don't you? Amen. I don't intend to let nothing turn me around. Praise the Lord. I'm on my way to heaven. And I started over 30 years ago, and I don't intend to quit now. There's a lot of people quitting, going astray, being deceived. And I was thinking this morning, it's very easy to be deceived. That's right. Children that was raised in Pentecost right today, preacher's children, saints as kids, deacons and Sunday school children, teacher's children. Raised in the church, deceived. They don't believe nothing is right, nothing is wrong. They just do whatever they feel like doing inside. But I'm glad for the word of God today because it tells us what's right and what's wrong. Amen. Amen. And I'm glad I believe it. God help me to believe it till I die. We're going to read two different passages of scripture today. The first one is found in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, 
and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now this verse tells us that we've got to have faith that it's impossible to please God without it because we can't be and we cannot do what God has called us to be and do without faith. How do I get faith? He tells us in Romans 10 verse 17 with the supporting and the connecting scripture here. I've got to have faith. I can't please God without it. How do I get it? So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Can you say praise the Lord? Lord. You may be seated. God bless you. Praise Praise the Lord. So I got to have faith. The Lord tells me I got to have faith. It's impossible. Absolutely impossible. Please God without it. But how do I get it? And he tells us how to get it in Romans 10, 17. I want to talk about today because to have revival, to have healings, to have miracles, to have signs and wonders, and even to be in a position to live for God ourselves, and to be and to receive. You can't receive nothing from God other than through faith. All rewards, all dividends, all benefits that God has comes through faith. You can't even be saved without it. You can't uh, be healed without it. You can't have moving of God's spirit, revival, nothing without faith. So we've got to have faith. And he tells us here in Hebrews 11 and 6 what faith is. Somebody said, I heard a fellow one time preaching, he said, faith is getting a hold of nothing and hanging on to it until it turns to something. I don't agree with that. You might have said that yourself. Now listen to what, listen to it now. The man said that faith was getting a hold of nothing. And holding on to nothing until it turned to something. Now, when you look at that, it sounds good and it makes good preaching material. But when you analyze it, it doesn't make sense. If I have a hold of nothing, nothing will ever turn to something. How is nothing going to turn to something? Look at the paradox there. Look at the impossibility. A lot of folks don't understand faith. That's why we don't have faith. You see, you don't get faith by praying for faith. Faith does not originate in you. Because we are creatures of doubt. I'm born to doubt. My nature's to doubt. So is yours. You hear some kind of a fantastic tale, you know. The first thing you say, well, I, I don't believe that. I mean, that's the first reaction you have. I, I, I don't believe that. Somebody tell you, no, man, I, I was healed of cancer. I had a paralyzed leg and God straightened out. The very th- first thing goes through your mind is you doubt the man is telling the truth. It's too fantastic. It's, it's beyond the imagination and the comprehension of the human mind and nature. So the reason a lot of times we don't get things from God and we don't receive things from God and we're not what we ought to be for God is because we don't understand what faith is and where it comes from and how we get it. And I hope and pray today before we leave here that we'll have a little better understanding about faith. Now he talks about that in the Bible that God wants us to trust him. And Paul mentions in Philippians 4.19 that he wants us to trust him as the source of our supply. He wants us to bring all of our needs to him. He tells us over and over again, all ye that labor and heavy laden, you come to me with those needs and those problems and those sicknesses and uh, I'll give you rest. Uh, He 
He is pictured in the Bible as a, as a shepherd. And so the Bible teaches us that God wants us to trust in him. He wants us to believe in him. He wants us to, to come to him as the source of our supply. All right, the thing that determines trust in God. How can I trust in God? The thing that determines trust in God or confidence in God or our depending and receiving things from God is our faith in God. I cannot trust in God if I don't have faith in Him. I can't depend on Him if I don't have faith in Him. I can't have confidence in Him if I don't have faith in Him. I can't receive nothing from Him if I don't have faith I'm going to receive it because He says here that whoever comes to God must believe that He is and that he is a rewarder that I'm going to get it. Right. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. To those that diligently seek him. Yes. So I've got to have faith. And, uh, and the Bible says that it's impossible for me to, to please God without faith. So I'm saying that the statement that, that faith is, whole, is getting a hold of nothing and holding on to it until it turns to something is really not a biblical doctrine because the Bible said in Hebrews 11 and 1 that faith is the substance. So faith has a substance to it. Hallelujah. It is something. It, it is something. Faith is something. It's not getting a hold of nothing, but it's getting a hold of something. But what I want to find out is, is what that something is that for me to get a hold of, that I can get from God what I need to get from Him. And the Bible is going to tell me what that is. Yes, He will. Yes, He will. So He said it is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things that are not seen. All right, now then. So when we look at the translation of that word substance here, it means the evidence. It means another translation says that faith is the ground or the confidence of things hoped for or a sure persuasion or conviction concerning things that are not seen. So when I'm looking at faith, I've got to get a hold of faith. All right, faith is conviction. Faith is assurance. Faith is confidence. Faith is absolute persuasion in what the Word of God says and what God is and who God is and what I can have for God. So when I get a hold of faith, I've got a hold of confidence. I've got a hold of assurance. I've got a hold of persuasion and persuasion and confidence. Does not come by just saying that you want it. It comes by hearing the Word of the Lord. Hallelujah. You gotta have the word of God, hallelujah. That's right. Before you're gonna have any faith. That's right. You're not gonna have faith just because you want it. It does not originate with you. It's not you don't have faith because you read something about it. No, so no, sir. You have faith by studying and by looking and by Preaching the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. And the reason we don't have faith like we ought to have is because we don't have enough knowledge of the word of God. We read everything but God's holy word. Amen. We talk about everything but God. I told him the other day, I'm so, I told him, I said, I'm so tired of getting around preachers and other people and, and never hear them talk about God. They talk about the ball game. They talk about this. They talk about something else. But I tell you what, we need to talk about Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We need to have knowledge of the Word. It's the Word of God that's going to produce faith in our heart. We gotta have faith if we're gonna please the Lord. Yes. If you're gonna have revival, it's gonna come by faith. Yes. And the only way in the world that faith is gonna be produced and created in my heart is through the divine word of God. Yes, Hallelujah. Sir. Yes, sir. You can't have revival without faith. And you can't have healing without faith. You can't have nothing without faith. Hallelujah. All right. All right. 
Oh, hallelujah. I just got to have faith because he said it's impossible for me to please God without it. Now I've got to find out how to get it and what it is. And so I find out that I get it through the study and the preaching of the word of God. I find out that it's confidence. I find out that it's persuasion. I find out that it's assurance in my heart. I find out that it's convictions. Let me say this. The reason that we don't have any more convictions among us today is it's because we don't have enough knowledge of God's holy word. Because the word, the Holy Ghost, will not produce conviction. A lot of folks think they can follow the Holy Ghost and nothing else. Holy Ghost is not designed for to produce conviction. It's designed for revelation. But the word of God will produce conviction in your soul. Hallelujah. That's right. The Holy Ghost is revelation. It'll lead you, but it will not produce conviction in your heart. And that's a sure that you got to have to trust in the Lord. That's why people can talk in tongues and run the aisles on Sunday night and live like the devil and be backslid before the next Sunday night. It's only the word of God that will produce conviction in the heart of the believer. The Holy Ghost is not designed for that. The Holy Ghost is designed for revelation. But the word of God is designed for conviction. And it's only conviction that stabilizes you. That's why I said a double-minded person is unstable in all of his ways. It's because he don't have any conviction. The reason he don't have any conviction is because he don't have the knowledge of the word of the law. They don't know what's right and what's wrong. They don't know what pleases God and what doesn't. They don't know how to dress, how to live, where to go, how to talk, how to act. But the Word of God will tell you every one of those precepts and laws of God. It will put conviction in your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It will produce conviction in you. And conviction is a stabilization or a balance that the winds and the false doctrines cannot deter you or sidetrack you or cause you to be unstable in your walk with God. It's the only thing that will stabilize you. Nothing else will stabilize you. And I'm going to show you where it's the anchor Paul said to your soul. People don't have no anchor. They ain't they connected with nothing. The, the, the wind just tosses them back and forth and here and yonder, somewhere else. They, they get with somebody that's got a, a big personality that's influential and they believe everything they say. Then first thing you know, uh, somebody else that's got a little stronger personality comes along and they convince them and they switch over to their side of the story. And they don't know where they're going. It's like there was when we had the great television debate. I, I studied the word of God, got my conviction. I stood my ground. I stayed with it. And I'm still staying with it. I don't care who persuades or who gets up, who does this or who does something else. The word of God will put convictions in your heart that nothing on the world can move you. Hallelujah. Oh, young people, you got to get your head in the word of the Lord. The word of God will create conviction in your heart. You won't be persuaded by some personality that comes along. That's trying to lead us in a direction that will be our destruction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So our faith in God depends upon our knowledge of God. And if I don't have knowledge, how in the world can I have faith in somebody I don't know nothing about? Right? You trust only those that you know. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. And if you know God... You know him. You got knowledge of him. You can't have knowledge of God other than through the word of God. Because the word of God is the knowledge of God. 
It's the complete revelation of God. It's the will of God. It tells you everything about that, that everything that you need to know about God. You don't have to worry about depending upon anything else to come on the sideline to try to teach you about God. The word, the preaching of the word, the study of the word of God will reveal who God is, what God is, and everything about him. Hallelujah. We need to learn the word of the Lord. He said, without knowledge, my people perish. It's not because of the lack of talent. It's not because of the lack of the spirit. It's not because of the lack of miracles that his people perish. But it's because of the lack of knowledge that his people perish. You can perish in the midst of miracles and signs and wonders and, and, and revival. You can perish. You can perish. Right in the middle of it all. So faith is that assurance. It's that conviction. It's that confidence. It's that persuasion. In the absolute reliability of God. That's where we stagger. And that's where we stumble when troubles come. We don't know if God's going to come or not. Brother Enzi mentioned the scripture. While Please like, comment, and subscribe.